I'm often asked, is it possible to reverse terrible diseases like Alzheimer's or Parkinson's simply with your mind? And the fact is, these diseases take on physical attributes in the brain that cannot simply be reversed with only your mind. But what we can do is throughout life, we can try to stave off disease, exercise, diet, and developing a more healthy brain by always being the conscious observer. Let your brain serve you, don't serve it. Really, in the last few years, there's been an amazing amount of research on the beneficial effects of sleep and how lack of sleep is actually one of the most detrimental things that can happen. Tell me about the relationship between sleep and brain health specifically, because that affects everything from our relationships to our social interactions, to our habits, to our addictions. So when we consider the benefits of sleep, you need to consider them along with the benefits of meditation. In meditation, if you're a good meditator, you know, you can bring your brain waves down to theta. If you're really good, you can get down to delta. So you're slowing the frequency. Everybody doesn't know what this means. So delta is but four, free, four uh, one, even, even one or two. One or two cycles yeah. a yeah. second, yeah. right? With, with theta being more towards, uh, you know, between five and 10. And then the range. normal waking state, which is beta and alpha? Yeah, up around 15, 20. 15, 20. So you're really slowing the right. frequency of brain waves, right. basically. Okay, good. Now what will happen when you're sleeping <clears throat> is when you're in deep sleep, what's called slow wave sleep, which only happens for maybe two or three hours, maybe if you're lucky, in the night. During this delta wave sleep, recent research shows that this is when all of the sensory information you took in during the day, it's, it's temporarily stored as short-term memory, now gets consolidated, registered onto long-term memory. So the short-term memory of the brain is in one region called the hippocampus, it looks like a seahorse, like two seas together. Access to short-term memory, yeah. because we don't know at Sorry, the cellular access, level access where memory is. Yeah, but good. But once, but as the sensory information and the ability to recall it is sitting in the short-term memory, to now consolidate in your long-term memory regions of the brain, you need slow-wave sleep. You need delta-wave sleep. In this country, in the elderly, in folks uh, who are... Uh, over 75 years old, a good proportion do not have slow wave sleep. Sleep disturbances in the elderly are, are, are an epidemic. And even, for, even where you have decent sleep, they're, they're, you know, in studies that have been done, many elderly folks are sleeping and not getting slow wave sleep. But this is, you know, in, when you have slow wave sleep, this is when you are really allowing your brain to consolidate all of the new information it took in so that it's now available somewhere in your long-term memory. Now, think about intuition. At some level, intuition is the ability to suddenly have a flash, an insight, where you have no idea how you got there. A creative leap. Yeah, a creative leap, but, but you, you suddenly just have an intuitive sense about what's happening. One contributor to an intuitive experience is that long-term memories that you don't even know you have, they've been stored during your slow-wave sleep. All the sensory input coming in during the day, which you thought just went in and out, well, it's in there for a while. But if you want to have it available later on in order to come to in, you know, new insights, it needs to be stored somewhere, or at least the ability to recall it has to be stored somewhere. And that's the long-term memory part of the brain. This happens during delta wave sleep. So delta is the escape from the default mode. Yeah. Now, if you're stressed and your cortisol levels are high, delta wave sleep is not possible. Delta wave meditation is not possible. If you're too intellectual, and some folks, especially those I work with, think you can't be too intellectual, I would say too much intellect can also be a poison like stress. We know the neurochemicals that are part of intellect, if they're too high, at too high a level, they also block delta wave sleep and achieving a delta wave state 
when you meditate. So you're shortchanging yourself the ability to store sensory information you took in all day in your brain for use later on, for example, in an intuitive flash. Um, you and I have created technologies uh, that actually help people go into Delta by feeding different frequencies of sound to different parts of the brain. Right. Well, during sleep, many folks think it's just REM, you know, and dreaming that's important for the health of the brain and the mind. But perhaps as important or more important is the delta wave or slow wave sleep. This is when you consolidate your memories. And also in terms of risk for Alzheimer's disease as you age, it's during delta wave sleep that you turn off the production of the main toxin that accumulates in the brain that causes Alzheimer's as we age. So delta waves are a good thing for the brain. It's possible to induce this delta wave state by hearing a frequency that's at the same frequency, you know, auditory frequency that's at the same uh, frequency as delta wave state of the mind. So this can be done with auditory beats. It can be combined with a mask that allows you to see lights blinking at a slower and slower rate. So you'll be hearing beats that are slowing down, lights blinking at a slower and slower rate to bring you down from alpha, beta to theta, all the way down to delta. So you can literally dial in into a dream state or yeah. dial in to a deep sleep state. Yeah, And, and that's the, what we're creating. And the right key now. is not to fall asleep. So you yeah. have to program it so that you're in the delta, you get down to delta, but you don't fall asleep. And that's, that's the, uh, the, the, one of the keys to this type of technology. I'm really excited about the technologies yeah. I, that we're creating. And I think it will be helpful for, especially for elderly folks who are having trouble with getting enough slow wave sleep so at the same time you can improve your memory, theoretically, based on what we know, you'll also be turning off this default network, and in doing so, you're turning off the production of the toxins that cause Alzheimer's disease.